lots of people watching the mainstream media are pulling their hair out at the presentation of what's going on. Lots of people are just watching Al Jazeera instead, which has a lot of good news on there and information about what's happening. However, on the mainstream media, every so often, somebody comes on the screen to give the alternative view to what we're being fed, and that often that person is James Schneider, um, who's here. James, thank you for coming on. Thanks for having me. So what I'm going to do is refresh people's uh, memories on what happened in the past week with James's appearances on TV, if you haven't seen them. Um, and it, yeah, I mean, if you have seen them, and if you haven't seen them, then have a look at this. This is um, James on Talk TV. Uh, it's quite an astonishing uh, piece of television. But anyway, look, I'll just play it. And then afterwards, I'll hear what you've got to say about it. 76% of people in this country want to see a ceasefire now. And that's because that's the common sense position. Because most people know that you don't respond to the unjustifiable killing of one group of children by killing a whole load more children. It doesn't make any sense. So what we should be doing, what we need from our politicians, which we don't have because they're in lockstep in support of uh, the Israeli bombing campaign at the moment, is to call for a ceasefire. Because Britain not only provides diplomatic support for Israel, but we also help arm Israel. So we are complicit in the crimes which are taking place. The tricky position right here is, is sitting in your studio and his name is uh, James. James is, of course, a pound shop uh, academic who underwrote, who sustained, who was the right hand man of Jeremy Corbyn. Jeremy Corbyn, who uh, fa uh, certainly <clears throat> failed in his role as being leader of the Labour Party, uh, you know, giving the Labour Party its worst possible election result since the 1930s. But of course, he also pushed me and my family, me and my family out of the Labour Party, where I was a member for the last 20 years or so, and he pushed me and my family over to live in Israel. That's what anti-Semitism does in the UK. Uh, and James endorsed it. James, of course, is not the most uh, trustworthy of people because he was, of course, before being um, vaguely associated with the Labour Party, leading momentum. But of course, before that, he was president of the Lib Dem Society. And of course, he's been writing for the Conservative Home newspaper. So. James is a tin pot student uh, uh, politician that really should stay in the student union. This is about big boy politics. Well, okay, well, this well, is about yeah, real lives. A, all right, David. No, no, I, I hear you. There's a, there's a lot in there. Um, very, we very learned important. a lot about James's this CV as well here. Didn't know about the conservative well. home bit. But well, it's the, not true. The, 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 pound, the pound shop very academic very stuff. I mean, you're not really it, the, the man to be talking about this, is David's point. Uh, well, I think he's still going. Um, I, I mean, most of what he said is factually inaccurate, but I'm, I'm not really going to... This isn't about me. I'm, I'm not here to talk about myself if we want to have But some... do you represent a view, the momentum view, the Corbyn view? I think I, that's overarching. The position that I represent is what 76% of people in the UK, view. according to YouGov Pulseport, we want a ceasefire now. That is the common sense position. It, in my view, is the only morally plausible position. And we have a role. Everybody in this country actually has a role in helping bring about peace because... Our government is a major supporter of Israel, and we can pressure our politicians, and if they change course, that can have a material effect in the field. That can help save lives. So I'm not here talking for anybody. I'm just saying that this is the case. The reason why the overwhelming majority of people want a ceasefire is because it is the common sense, right thing to do, and our political class is not offering it to us at all, neither the Conservative Party nor Keir Starmer's Labour. OK. Um, thank you the to David. Do you want to get a fi the final word in, David? Yeah, the overwhelming majority of the British people rejected Corbyn's approach to international policy because this is a terrorist organisation which cannot be appeased as James suggests, it needs to be defeated because if it's not defeated here, it will take root on the streets of London. We already saw 100,000 people marching from the river to the sea. Palestine will be free. That it was means more than 100,000. I was there. And, that, it, and, that and, and it wasn't frightening at all. people here in Israel. James, you've had your turn. Now it's my chance. It's time to expose your hypocrisy. It's time to expose your love of Jew haters. And it's time to put an end to Hamas. <sighs> And all right-thinking people 
all genuine people would agree with that notion, okay. while, of course, protecting the lives of hostages and, of course, of ordinary Palestinian people. All right, people that, 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 that last comment may well be seen as a yellow card, I think, from James. I mean, your, your love of Jew haters, I think you would wish to refute that unequivocally. Of I mean, yeah, uh, it's absurd. I mean, I'm not, I'm not getting into his ridiculous ad hominem stuff, which is uh, offensive, false, idiotic. And most importantly, we are talking about a conflict where people are dying. I don't care if this bloke doesn't like me. I don't care you if I like him. Evil, it's, it's in... You support evil Hamas. I do I... not. And right-thinking people... OK, I obviously don't support evil Hamas. Evil. If, okay. if, right. if he were listening evil to what I'm, I'm saying... Child killers. I'm saying that... Women rapers, child beheaders. Yes, evil Hamas, James. You support them. No, I, I don't. Anyway, I'll just let him run out of steam, right. and then and then maybe we can return me, to some some sanity. Because what we're talking about right here, behind me, you know. not behind you, and your tin pot ideas. All right, David. On that point, thank you, David Mensa, uh, for joining us. Uh, wow, that's pretty horrific. Uh, you had no idea this guy was going to come on and say all that, did you? No, I've never heard of the never heard of the guy. Um, never heard of. Him. No, 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 not at all. But I, I um, uh, and actually when the producer told me, oh, I said, who am I on with? And they said, David Mensah. I said, who's that? They're like, oh, don't you know? I said, no, I've got, I've got no idea. Um, but I assumed that given he's the former director of Labour Friends of Israel, he would most likely try to make the story about the Labour Party when this is not about the Labour Party. This is about children people, families being wiped out in Gaza. This is about a small strip of land being raised to rubble. And that was what I was going to talk about and the need for a ceasefire. And before going on, I did think he'll look silly if he keeps on trying to talk about the Labour Party. I didn't think he would just try to abuse me. But um, so I carried on talking about the, the main points because, you know, frankly, what he says doesn't really matter. He's not engaging with with anything substantive. He's not engaging with how you would go about saving lives. He hasn't engaged with any of the arguments. So you can basically ignore it. I mean, the, as you call it, the ad, ad hominem, um, I'm not very good at that in, but the, 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 um, the ad hominem uh, attacks, I mean, you, you were really getting total... Yeah, personal stuff on you. I mean, have you have you have you had that before? Are you are you okay? I mean, how do you feel about all that stuff? I mean, it just seems really out of order. Of course, it's out of order. I mean, it's it's the first time it's happened to me in that way live on TV. Um, but I mean, obviously, I've received abuse before, and you know, continue to, and and uh, and that's fine. Look, it um, this is a political thing. You know, this is not oh, my feelings are hurt because someone said that. He's not saying that because he knows anything about me. It's not me in my soul that he's engaging with. It's the, his, you know, the fantasy image that is created. And clearly, you know, in some ways, that strange shouting man is, is also a victim in the fact that he seems to be genuinely scared of something that he shouldn't be genuinely scared of. His, uh, his engagement with reality is rather warped, and that's come from somewhere. And he clearly has some mad fears and so on and so forth. So I know he's not really engaging with me. So if he calls me this or calls me that, you know, it doesn't hit me because it's, it's, it's not even really directed at me as a person. And, I mean, and, and anyway, uh, you know, going back again, the purpose of doing these media interviews isn't to talk about myself or be happy or sad. It's to make a hopefully as clear as possible political argument. And in this case, having him attacking me, I think made it easier to make my political my my political argument if I stuck to it, which I did, which is why I did, you know didn't really engage with anything, you know, any of the abuse he was hurling. I mean, what 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 I find it is, I mean, in my experience as well on this, is, is, is we're made into cartoon characters, uh, or my, we're not, we're caricatures of people. By that, these people present us as that. But when you're doing it on a TV show, they can see you as a human being. People watching see you as a human being. You're not a cartoon. You're not a caricature. They can see you. You you looked shocked. You looked hurt. You also looked bemused. You were going through a whole kind of human re mm. reaction to this guy attacking you that made you look like someone who isn't all that he was saying. So he undermined 
you by making out your cartoon of this kind of horrible guy, then we can all see you're not. I mean, so yeah, but way, I mean, you've, I, proved, I, you've I, proved it's good to go on the shows because you you show the face of the people they're caricaturing. Yes, but I, I, I again, I think it's more than that, which is I'm making. Uh, what I think is a reasoned argument for a ceasefire, and he's making the argument against it, basically. And yeah. I'm making it, you know, ca calmly and uh, with appeals to reason and facts, and he's making the opposite by hurling abuse. And I think that just that, that very juxtaposition, putting those two things side by side, helps make the case for the ceasefire argument because... His non star argument is just to yell about evil Hamas and being a Tim Pot academic. If only I were an academic, you know, either Tim Pot one or a pound shot one or whatever. Now, uh, the next development that happened after that was um, Andy McDonald was uh, suspended as a Labour member and he's a Labour MP in Middlesbrough. Um, and this was about his comment that he made, he made a speech and he said, uh, you, you actually repeat what he said in this next uh, TV appearance, which is on Newsnight. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm interested to hear what you think about this one. So I'll, I'll just play, play some of that one. Here's Starmer live on air endorsed the war crimes which have led to the deaths of thousands of children and then sent Emily Thornbury onto this programme to also endorse war crimes that have led to the deaths of thousands of children. Andy MacDonald said that he won't rest until he sees Israelis and Palestinians living together in the Holy Land in peaceful liberty and he was suspended Welcome to the topsy-turvy world of Keir Starmer's Labour Party. Well, wait a Let me push back on the idea that, that, that to say from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free is in any way frightening or anti-Semitic, because it is not. Palestinians between the River Jordan and the Mediterranean Sea are dispossessed and denied. To say from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free is a call for justice for all people living there. And it does not mean a reversal of the current situation, where instead of the Palestinians being occupied, being uh, living under apartheid, and now being bombed and having war crimes committed against them, it will be Israelis. It does not mean that. It means all people living together, as Andy McDonald said, in peaceful so, liberty. What do you think the impact cool of his removing the whip from Andy McDonald yeah. will be then, James I Schneider? I think he looks ludicrous because right, it is plainly ludicrous you endorse war crimes and you're fine in his labor party so you, it, it, let's just do it. i'm referring endorsing to the, war I'm, crimes I'm, is I'm, a very I'm, very I'm, very big accusation i'm referring to his lbc interview and also to emily thornbury's interview sitting in this very studio probably in this very chair i think uh, you know keir Starmer has clarified the, those remarks and has actually does not support that he has ha all. has he at any point condemned the war crimes that we are seeing no he has not and it took days before they clarified Lu that he hadn't heard the question. Louise but they sent Ellen. Emily Thornbury out onto this Louise very Ellen. program to repeat his line. When I, generally speaking, when I go on to talk about a ceasefire, the media wants to, to talk to me about it in terms of internal Labour Party politics. You know, what does this mean for Keir Starmer? I don't care what it means for Keir Starmer, and really, nor should anybody else. You know, what's what's, right. Important, right. what's going on with the conflict? So, you know, for example, I was on an interview on Tuesday on, on Times Radio. And I was asked by John Pienaar, you know, he said, Keir Starmer's personal ratings have fallen by 12%. So don't you think you, as in me, should change my tone of my criticism because it's having a negative impact on his leadership ratings? You know, the, our media, particularly our political media, they know nothing. They know basically nothing. The people that work on it, work in it, know very, very little about any actual issue. What they do know is they know the phone numbers of people that work in politics and they know some of their personalities. And so they view everything through the prism of these people that, are the, 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 you know, the people that work in politics and the, and the politicians. So, yeah, I'm, they're, they're interested in going on about a ceasefire if they can code it as problem for Labour. Or also the other thing they try to do is, you know, you see this more in the, the, the right wing end of the media. You know, oh, it's about, you know, Labour's relationship with Muslims, as if, you know, 76% of the population who support a ceasefire, according to the YouGov poll, are all Muslim. I mean, it's absurd. Mm.
Right, I in see what poll, you're saying. In that so, poll, I should point out, it's only 8% that oppose a ceasefire. Wow. Uh, well, I mean, so you're saying that effectively you're only invited onto these shows because you're um, to talk about Labour's politics, but you managed to put into the interview the fact that we need a ceasefire and kind of move the move the, the discussion away a bit from that. So you, you're achieving um, uh, uh, something in that sense. Well, primarily that's it. I mean, the the take the the talk TV one that that you just showed. That was I'm there to talk about Labour. That's what they wanted to talk about, and I think it's absurd to talk about a conflict where people are dying, where Britain can have a role, where what happens in politics matters because we arm Israel and we diplomatically support it. Um, I think it's absurd that it becomes a question about factions within the Labour parties if that's what's really that's what's really happening. So I'm I'm happy to go on and then uh, and then turn it around. I mean, in that ca in in that Newsnight one, um, you know, of course they want to talk about it again in Labour Party management terms. But I, you know, I didn't really want to do that. Of course, in the in the opening bit, I wanted to show how ridiculous it is that you can endorse war crimes and and be fine and call for peace and not be fine in in the Labour Party. But I also wanted to make sure that I explained what from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free means and to push against the hideous projection, which is what you see from uh, a lot of people that claim that phrase is anti-Semitic, because they can only see that, for, that one group of people must have extreme dominance over the other group of people in that geographic area, which I think is hideous, is absolutely hideous, and is not true. Right. So, did, I mean, it, it looks like you're um, you're rattling, uh, ruffling, sorry, ruffling feathers um, in in the media by your coming on talking about uh, uh, they want you to talk about Labour politics, but you're talking about this other stuff. Do you think this will um, see you drop? Your, they'll drop you as a as a as a commentator as a result of this. Um, I I I don't know. To be honest, I wouldn't have thought so um, because. Uh, you know, when I talk about the other things, it doesn't, you know, from an editorial point of view, it doesn't ruin it and they still get views and and actually they get clipped up and, and watched a lot of times on, on social media and so on. So I don't think that, um, you know, I'm, there's a black mark against my name on, on Newsnight because of, uh, because of that. And also you've got to remember that you know, these are not monolithic organisations. Now, I don't know precisely what happened in this case I'm about to tell you on Newsnight, but, you know, it's potentially instructive. So they first tweeted out that first clip, that first bit where I said uh, Keir Starmer endorsed war crimes, blah, 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 Andy, what Andy McDonald said. Um, yeah. And they just tweeted that out with, you know, welcome to the topsy-turvy world of Keir Starmer's Labour Party, says James Schneider. And they tweeted that out. Um, and then they deleted it because I what I imagine... The, you know, whoever does the social media, who's probably a younger person who probably does support a ceasefire, who probably is more rational and engaged with the uh, with things, just went, well, that's obvious. That's the bit we'll put out. And then it got deleted. And then they put in a longer, less sort of shareable tweet, with, <clears throat> adding in commenting on Andy McDonald being suspended from the Labour Party for saying the controversial phrase from the river to the sea, you know, to reinsert the supposed charge right. so these things are not they're also not not monolithic i think there are i think there are people that work in all of the media organizations that i engage with that will also broadly speaking agree because they must only eight percent of people oppose a ceasefire well, you know, it's yeah, a real a minoritarian uh position to oppose a ceasefire and so it will be hard for them to control all the people operating in their organisations who, as you say, there's, there's only 8% who support um, the... the yeah, and, and, and also, you know, it's not a command and control... Like, you know, how, how, does, how does influence within the media operate? It doesn't operate in a command and control way. Like, so let's take the Sunday Times and John Withrow. John Withrow was the, the editor of the Sunday Times, and he said, Rupert Murdoch never once told me what to change, what to put in. To which the answer is, I'm sure that's factually accurate, but it's because he didn't have to, because you knew so well what it is that he would want and where the lines were not to cross. And the media much more functions in that way, rather than 
you know, sometimes you see in films, you know, the parody of the, the 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 bad billionaire boss who's you know writing the headline from his bath or whatever. You know, yeah. that, that that's not really how it that's not really how it functions. It happens in a more subtle, therefore more pernicious way, but a way that also therefore um, opens up gaps.